Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on first look review of the Lenovo ThinkPad L480. This is a 14-inch ultra book that's designed more for business professionals, and as the ThinkPad line implies, it has a pretty solid construction quality and fairly powerful internals for a relatively thin ThinkPad design. Now it starts at 1140 bucks for the base configuration model that includes a Core i5 processor. It's the 8th generation 8250U and goes all the way up to 3.4 gigahertz, has Windows 10 Pro Edition 64-bit installed, the display is Full HD, although the base configuration is not a touchscreen and also not IPS. So you have to pay about $200 more if you want the upgraded model that has a touch and a wider viewing angle display. The base model also comes with only 4 gigs of RAM, a little bit low in my opinion, but you can boost it up to 8 gigabytes with the higher configuration model. And the hard drive capacity is 512 gigabytes SSD, and it charges up using USB Type-C. So taking a closer look at the design of the ThinkPad here, we do have the LED light which will glow when the laptop is turned on. ThinkPads used to be all about the rugged construction, and back in the day when it was still developed by IBM, they had a thick layer of magnesium alloy underneath the plastic shell just to make it feel extra durable. But this version here is definitely lighter, and I believe it's only polycarbonate, but uh, overall still feels relatively solid for a non-aluminum laptop. We also have a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, a USB 3.0 port, we have a ventilation grille for the fan, Kingsington lock, and on the other side we have a full HDMI port, micro SD card reader, Ethernet port for wired internet, a second USB 3.0 port, so in total we get two USB ports, one charging USB Type-C port, and here's what the machine looks like on the back. We do have this coarse, pretty typical looking plastic and rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around, as well as a few grills here that uh, will drain out water in case you spill something on a keyboard. Now, by the way, here's what the charging adapter looks like. It's a pretty typical size, but uh, as aforementioned, it is now using USB Type-C and can give you pretty fast top-up speeds. It can be charged up in under three and a half hours and can last you for around nine hours of continuous use before you need to plug it back in. Uh, overall, I would say that battery life is decent, but considering that it's not using the most energy efficient chipset, it's a U series chip coupled with a Core i5, again, a running fan, it's going to be uh, not quite the longest lasting laptop in the world. Just like on MacBooks, you can open up the hinge using just one hand, so the weight distribution is done pretty well. Inside here, we have a fairly comfortable looking trackpad and very traditional ThinkPad esque keyboard. And the keyboard and mouse have always been some of the strongest attributes of the ThinkPad line, along with its durability, and this is really no exception. The keys themselves are island style, they're chiclet, they're very tactile and have a great depth to them. They feel very comfortable in terms of typing. The trackpad itself is also fairly generous, maybe not quite as large as on the latest as MacBooks, but certainly is spacious enough measuring over 3.5 inches for you to use multi-touch gestures, and the entire unit can be pressed down for easy interaction and swiping around. We still have that famous cursor point if you need some really precise input uh, with your index finger and you don't want to use the touchpad. Otherwise, the palm rest area itself is still made out of plastic, but there's really no flexing of any kind, and the same thing goes with the keyboard itself. There's no movement as you're pressing down on it, everything feels very firm, which as a business class laptop, it definitely should. Keyboard itself is not backlit, uh, even on the highest configuration model though, so that's something to really quickly keep in mind. Otherwise, the 14-inch display is matte, so it's not too reflective, and again, one of the only disappointing factors would be it's not an IPS panel in the base model, which I think is a little bit of a shame. It's a TN panel, which I think is a little bit on the cheap side. It simply means that if you're looking at it from off-axis, you can see how the colors do shift pretty quickly. Nonetheless, the hinge does fold all the way flat below the surface of the keyboard here, so it is going to be pretty durable as far as the construction is concerned, and you can see that's basically how the hinge is able to move forward. A very interesting design there, and again, definitely is one of the thinnest uh, kind of think pads um, out of uh, Lenovo and previously IBM's product line history. Now, as aforementioned, the performance of this computer is really solid. Otherwise, it's not too surprising. The configuration here is definitely good enough for even intensive apps that you would want to run, such as Power BI, if you're doing Photoshop, if you're doing some video editing, also good for productivity like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Project, things like that. And for sure, good enough for web browsing. Uh, you can open up, in my testing, about 10 to 15 tabs without really noticing any hiccups. Of course, we have all of the latest editions of Windows 10, including the timeline function, where you're able to very quickly see your previous history through different types of applications and browsers that you have open and jump back into it. Let's try 
say opening up a sample uh, document here using pivot tables. And again, loading time is really good. Performance of the multi-touch trackpad is pretty accurate and sensitive. So overall, you can definitely use it for complex kind of business purposes for reporting, document editing, and there's not going to be any hiccups as you are switching back and forth. Say we want to go to a site like the New York Times, just because it's a pretty complex page with lots of ads and video elements, which could be tricky for some lower power devices to run. But you can see it tell here how everything is still loading pretty much instantaneously and just uh, it delivers in terms of the performance. As with most ThinkPads, I haven't had any problems in terms of the connectivity and the reception quality. Here we have almost full bars of reception, even though the router is in a completely different room on another story of the building. In terms of other applications that you would want to use this uh, device for, uh, for example, maybe gaming. Now, of course, that's not going to be the primary use case of this machine. The GPU is probably the weakest area there, but the processor and the RAM should be still sufficient to keep up with most um, applications that you may want to throw at it. Certainly better than many lower cost uh, laptops or consumer grade laptops that you'll find. Now, as reviewed and as configured, we can see that this machine here does have 8 gigs of RAM, so it's the highest configuration there, although my model here has a slightly smaller hard drive uh, capacity. It's an SSD, which means that the boot up times, as you saw there, in terms of waking it up from sleep, takes just 2 seconds. So it's super fast, but the space is not quite as large as a traditional hard drive. Otherwise, a very clean install of the Windows system. Again, there you won't find too many extras on here, really up to the company or business to customize it as they want, uh, just for security reasons. So that's more or less it for the Lenovo L480 Ultrabook. Again, a 14-inch laptop that's designed primarily for businesses but could also be a fit for students, those looking for a slightly more rugged design. For a relatively small laptop, it packs pretty good horsepower in terms of the chipset as well as the RAM and storage configurations on board. But otherwise, it's a pretty decent performing, I would say, entry-level business computer and also refreshes the ThinkPad line by adding an ultra portable that is one of the thinnest yet in their collection. So if you want something really lightweight and easy just to take with you but still packs good enough performance as long as you don't need the most powerful, again, gaming machine or the highest configuration like a Core i7 uh, on the market, then this is something that's good enough that will get you through most of your tasks. So you can check out more details if interested and other details about the ThinkPad line in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.